Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Ma Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the, Lord, implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is true and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason I receive mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together all his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I have lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So today is a day that's kind of fraught with memories and tradition and uh, feelings. Um, in our city, we remembered 21 years ago when... Uh, our city was attacked, our nation was attacked. It was the uh, most violent, uh, bloody attack on our homeland. And um, we were all pretty much in shock. I remember the lines forming around the blood bank that were proved not to be necessary since there were so few survivors. I remember a couple had come in a couple days earlier and uh, they told me that their children were going to be uh, getting married and then they couldn't get married because they couldn't go downtown on the day of the uh, uh, attack. And later the next day they said, would you be willing to do the wedding here? They had the license. They're from England. And um, I said, well, I have to do marriage counseling first. Um, I said, are you sure you want to get married? And they said, yes. And I said, okay, counseling's over. And we, we did the wedding right here. And to me, in the midst of death was a sign of life and a sign of hope. Our city is recovering. The threats continue mostly with our own people, but we would be naive to think that we are out of danger at this point. I think one of the reflections I have about that event was that the attackers, those who took over the airplanes, believed they were doing the work of God. They believed that God was a vengeful God. Just as we see in our reading from Exodus today, we see a God who is, at least according to the text, is ready to destroy the people because they're worshiping the golden calf, the, the false idols. And Moses argues with God, as he did in the Sinai earlier, and said, you know, it's not going to look very good to the people around if you call a people and then you destroy them. And it's almost as if the prayers of Moses, the pleading of Moses, the pleading of a human being, changed the nature of God. Now, whether that happened or not, that seems to be the way it works in Scripture. It seems to be that as we imagine an angry God, we get caught up in a cycle of violence. We saw it on 9-11. It's harder for us to see it in the history of the church. 
with various crusades and pogroms and trying to make all the world Christian with a great inquisition in Spain and throughout Europe. Until we see that the prayer of Moses and the work of Jesus begins to reveal or change our image of God, whether it's revealing or changing, who knows, but let's assume that God is no longer the God of violence. They're no longer the God who calls us to violence, but rather calls us to forgiveness. St. Paul, in our reading today from Timothy, speaks about his past. Now, many of us are formed over time. Most of us are formed over time. Small incidents happen day after day that we barely notice but they begin gradually to create the fabric of character. Time and again, as we see uh, anger as a response to our misbehavior, we think that must be the way God is. That must be the way the law is. That must be the way that we are supposed to be, righteously opposed to all idolatry. And yet, every now and then, there are these incredible moments of revelation, teaching moments, that have a way of breaking through to our minds, to our psyches, to our souls. St. Paul was convinced he was doing the right thing as he persecuted the early Christians. He was on fire for the Lord when he was arresting these Christians and persecuting these Christians. And all of a sudden, a light comes that, in a sense, blinds him. And he realizes it's not by violence or vengeance or by holiness or by forcing anybody, but it's by, in a sense, coming to the conclusion that I, too, am in need of this kind of salvation. I, who thought I was righteous, am really the one who is most lost. The church so easily falls into being a place of vengeance, being a place of making itself holy by keeping apart from the world, by fashioning a God after our own anger, and it takes something to, in a sense, break through to us. An incident, a comment, um, an experience, a dream, a revelation that says, this is really not the way that it is. Jesus had this capacity to turn common, ordinary events into teaching moments, to take people's assumptions and, and, and help them see it in a reverse kind of way. In today's gospel, there are really two kinds of people. There are those who grumble and mumble and complain and judge and criticize, and there's those who rejoice. There are those who rejoice because they've been the ones who've been complained about, mumbled about, avoided, ostracized, exiled, banished. Jesus is very aware that the party cannot begin until everybody's invited. The banquet can't begin, even though it's easier to do it without them but to go out and to find those people who've been cast out, those people who've been excluded. And the exclusion makes sense. I mean, why not keep the 99 sheep instead of the one sheep? Let it go. It makes sense to have a small sacrifice, 
This is what Caiaphas said. Isn't it better that one person suffer than the whole nation suffer? Isn't it better to, to have a designated victim than, than everybody to have to suffer? But Jesus focused on the consciousness of simple, ordinary people and used it as a teaching moment. And so those who were sinners, the tax collectors and the sinners, were the ones who were attracted to Jesus because he was their only avenue back into human community. And it turned out that those who were grumbling and complaining were probably the ones who were like St. Paul and needed the experience of conversion the most. So he speaks about somebody who loses one sheep instead of saying hey I did pretty well I only lost one is obsessed with going out and finding the one this should be the work of the church to find those who've been excluded those who've been cast out those who have fallen through the cracks in our society who've been lost who are the least and the last to be invited and say it really doesn't begin until we invite all of them in because God is not one who accepts our economy of sacrificing the poor and the weak and the objectionable but rather wants each person to be valued to be sought after to be redeemed or the woman who has these ten coins it means that she's probably got a pretty good collection I know this feeling quite well where you just lose one thing and Everything else fades into the background. There's no peace until that object is found. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and she rejoices. This is the constant theme that Jesus preaches. Not a religion of anger, not a religion of revenge, not a religion of sacrificing others so that the rest of us can be happy but a religion that looks for and remembers and values and reaches out and searches and invites and practices hospitality. There is great rejoicing as opposed to saying, you know, these are necessary losses. Allegedly on 9-11, John McCain, a senator, said, God have mercy on the souls of those men who did this act. He said, because we're not going to. He at least was accurate. We are a people of violence. We are a people who perpetuate it, who participate in it, who see it and cloak it in, in a righteous indignation. It is our anger. It is our violence. It is our creation that Jesus calls us to step away from. To see somehow a different way of loving and forgiving and inviting. And when we become that people, I don't think we're going to have to be quite as afraid of the attacks of others. To follow Jesus is to find the way of peace. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son, Son of God, God, eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, light from light, light true God, God from true God, God begotten not, not made, of one being, being with the Father. Through, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down, down from heaven. heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Andrew, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially Ebony, Terry, Lynn, Renee, Michelle, continued healing for Pencel of Matoma, Terry Horak, Cecilia Phillip, Ambassador Sabat Ali, Mary Jane, Hyacinth, Kathy, Christy, Rita, Bill, and Barbara. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O Lord, God our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. All individuals and families affected by 9-11. We pray for Queen Elizabeth. We pray for Terry's beloved cat, Sterling, who died this past week. And we pray in memory of Dave Hanso, Tim, Bruce Mora, Canon Francis Rubin, Mary Ann Bastioni. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In, in your, your compassion, compassion forgive, forgive us, us our sins, sins known, known and unknown, unknown things, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit, spirit that we may we live, live and serve you in this of life, life, to the, the honor, honor and glory of your name, through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you unto everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. <laughs> peace, Jim. Peace. Oh, yeah, announcements, right? You're on, boss. <laughs> Please be seated for announcements. And especially we thank you, Ben, for being with us again and for sharing your beautiful voice. I would like to recognize the people who do the soup kitchen. Yesterday was my first chance in over a year, and it was very impressive. And the people clearly felt loved and fed. So there were compliments on the, for the chef. <laughs> Today, we, for our class, we will celebrate a very sad um, commemoration of 9-11, just share our own experience and our spiritual journey as a result 
of that time. So please join us and we will have the famous juice today, the lemonade. And we will begin doing that actually after church in the future, having tea until it's coffee time and just for a chance to visit together after church. So this will be our first chance to do that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Thank you. <clears throat> all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
The post-communion prayer of thanksgiving is found in your service sheets. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.